Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you how to build a configuration in OpenTX that'll simplify maiden flights for you. All right, guys, time to get your cowboy boots on because I'm going to throw some stuff at you today. I came up with this configuration to help out with maidens. The idea is that when you're out maidening a plane, you have things that you want to check and adjust, and, and you're also flying a new plane, and that alone can get your thumbs moving a little twitchy. So I thought I'd come up with a configuration that would help you ease the workload that you go through during the maiden process. And there are two primary things we're going to focus on in this configuration. The first one is instant trim. I'm going to talk about that in some level of detail. And then the second thing we're going to talk about is how to use global variables, special functions, and logical switches to adjust your expo and your weights and have the radio tell you what's going on as you fly. I'd like to start off by discussing instant trim because every time I bring it up in a video, I get a handful of questions asking, John, what the heck is instant trim? So I'd like to clarify what instant trim does before we go any further. I'm going to lock all the stick positions so I can let the sticks go and show you what the trim instant trim does. Notice before we start playing with the sticks that all my trims are zero and I'll show you my sub trims is zero as well. All of my sub trims are also zero. Okay, so let's go back. Let's imagine we're on our maiden flight. We take off and we pull our stick back and realize that in order to get straight and level flight, I've got to pull my elevator down to 17 and my aileron over to 9. That, that's where the stick has to be in order for this plane to fly straight and level. And just to add a little bit more to it, I'm going to imagine that I have to have my rudder over at, say, 15 to the right. With this configuration, my rudder is to the right 15 points, my elevator is down 17, and my aileron is right 9. With that configuration, my plane is flying straight and level. Here's what instant trim allows me to do. Again, look at my trims. They're all zeroed out on the radio. When I pull my instant trim switch that I've configured in special functions, when I pull that and let it go, it's going to copy the value of these sticks to my trims. All right, so let's do that first. I'm going to pull this down and watch the trims. Okay, notice that my elevator is now pulled back, my aileron is to the right, and my rudder is to the right. What happened there is my radio copied my stick positions to my trims. Now, when you're flying, you don't want to lock those sticks in. You got to let them go. Once you hit that instant trim, you let them go and you go back to center. And when you do that, you're going to find out that your plane is trimmed on all three axes of control with one click. Now in practice, I never do it that way. When I'm flying, I trim my elevator and aileron first and I hit my momentary switch. After I've done that, I do dive tests for my rudder. I just wanted to show you that it works on all three of the primary axes of control. Okay, so that's instant trim. All right, hopefully everybody now understands what instant trim does we will be configuring instant trim in this model because that's part of the overall concept of using the radio to ease your burden during a maiden. Regarding the rest of the configuration and that's setting expo and rate as we fly, there are five things we need to accomplish. The first thing we're going to do is establish a curve and we're going to call it a safety curve because what we don't want to do is flip into a tuning mode and have no control over the plane. That'd be terrible. We'll do this in a safe way by establishing a safety curve. The second thing we'll do is create inputs that utilize that curve, and we'll be focusing on the right and left sliders. You can use pot switches if you want, and in fact, you can even do other things like put ailerons on one set and elevator on a different one. I'm not going to get that complex today, but think about it. Let your imagination run a little bit. Maybe the second or third time you watch this video, you'll the light will click on and you'll say, oh, I see how I could do that with a set of pots and a set of sliders. The third thing we're going to do is configure logical switches to track our movement. We have to understand what's going on and have our radio report back to us that we are in fact making changes. Number four, our special functions. We have to adjust our variables. We have to set some audio prompts and we have to engage the instant trim. And then of course, number five, we have to simulate and make sure that 
what we implemented in our configuration actually works. All right, let's get to work. Step one, curves. We've got to do the curve. I'm just going to use curve number one, and I'm going to use two points on this curve. I'm going to name this curve weight and expo, and I'm going to set the left side to be 30, and the right side, I'm going to use 95 just because I want you guys to see that there is a limitation imposed by the curve. So 95 will be the right. Here's why I call this a safety curve, and I want to explain one thing about these two numbers. 30 and 90 are going to be the minimum and maximum values that can be utilized for weight and for expo in this model. The idea here is that if you don't put a minimum number like 30 and you flip into this mode, you could find out that you have no control over an elevator or an aileron. By using 30, you know minimally you have a weight of 30. So what I would suggest to you is that for the lower and upper values, use numbers that correspond to the lower and upper rates for your low rate and your high rate. For example, if you're flying a plane and the low rates you set up are 40 and the high rates you set up are 90, use those values. Use 40 and 90. That way you'll know whatever testing you do, you'll be able to control the plane. You'll never be below 40 or above 90. So that's the idea. Use, the, use this as a fence to keep your airplane in the air when you're flying, when you switch into this tuning mode. All right, that's step number one, curves. Step number two, we have to take a look at inputs. And what we're gonna do on in inputs is we're gonna create two of them, one for weight, one for expo. So I'm gonna use line six. You can use any line you want. And for the input name, I'm gonna use WEI. For the line name, we're gonna call it weight. For the source, I'm gonna use my left slider for the source. And for the curve, we have to apply the curve that we just made, and we're gonna use our weight and expo curve. Now here's a pro tip. If you watch the flight modes video I did, you could also set this up to work just inside flight modes. I thought about doing that in this video, but I thought it would get way too complicated. So I'm just gonna leave that as a pro tip and suggest to you that you could set this up to work only in certain flight modes. Just a thought, just throwing it out there. That's our weight input. Now on line seven, I'm gonna create another input and we're gonna call that one expo. So EXP, EXPO, this one we're gonna put on our right switch and we have to apply our curve. And by the way, you can also create two different curves. If you want one curve for expo, say, you know, 20 to 40, and you want one curve for weight, say 50 to 100, you, you can do that. Uh, I'm just using a single curve to keep it simple. But for expo and weight, you could also create two different curves and, and that would work, no problem. What these inputs do is allow us to establish an input source that's governed by our curve. So when we move the left slider and the right slider, it can't go any further than a distance defined by this curve, which we currently have set at 30 and 95, right here and here. The last thing we need to do under inputs is add an input that allows us to utilize our adjustable weight and expo. I'm gonna do that by right-clicking on this top entry and we're gonna hit duplicate. For aileron and elevator, I want to configure them so that they use our variable positions with our sliders for weight and expo. So here's how we do that. We're going to go into this middle row and I'm going to set the weight to be GV1 and I'm going to set the expo to be GV2. And I also want to apply a switch SB middle because I only want these variables to take effect in a certain condition. And notice I have this one. This is my old configuration where I just had two rates. This was not SB up, so I have to change this to be SB down. Okay, so what this does is when I'm SB up, I'll use 9570. When I'm SB middle, this is my tuning mode. I'm using GV1 for weight and GV2 for expo. And when I'm SB down, I'm using a low rate, 35 and 30. Now we need to do the same thing for the elevator. So we'll duplicate this line and we'll change it to use GV1 for our weight and GV2 for our expo. Now I haven't configured GV1 and 2 yet. We'll get to that in just a minute. Hang, hang tight, it'll happen. And we're gonna use SB middle to invoke that one. And then we have to switch this 
low rate to, to use SB down only. Now we have inputs that will take effect when we use SB middle as our rate switch, and those inputs will utilize our two global variables, one and two, for weight and expo on both of these surfaces. Okay, let's jump over to logical switches. Now I've covered some of these special functions before. I'll touch on them briefly in this video, but you want to make sure you watch prior tutorial videos for more in-depth explanations of what some of these more advanced functions do. In this case, we're going to use the delta function, and I want the absolute value. So what this is going to look at is when there's a change in a given source, and it's the absolute value of that change. That's all I care about. The source we want to evaluate in this case is global variable 1, and I'm going to use a value of 3 and I'm going to and it with the SB minus switch. So what that means is that this logical switch will only activate when GV1, global variable 1, increments or decrements by a value of 3. And this SB switch has to be in the middle position. So you remember on the input screen, this only works if SB is in the middle. So there's a pattern here. We only want this to work if it's in the middle. If it's not in the middle, if SB is not in the middle, we don't want any impact to our configuration. So for logical switch 2, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the delta variance from our source. Our source in this case will be GV2, because that one is our expo. And we're going to use a value of 3. And we're going to end it with the SB minus switch. That's it for logical switches. That, that's actually a pretty easy configuration. And what this is going to do again is when GV1 or GV2 move by more than three points, we want logical one and two to activate. That's it. That's all it does. I don't care if it's an up movement or a down movement. I just want to know that they've moved. All right, let's jump over to special functions and wrap this configuration up. We've got a lot of work to do in here, and what we're going to be doing is using special functions to adjust our global variable and give us some audio prompts and do the instant trims. You can use any special function slot you want. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to use one for my starting point. Special function number one, I want a switch that's on all the time. I want to set the action to adjust GV1, and the value is going to come from our source, which is our input, and that's the weight. That's our weight slider. What this says is anytime I move that slider, the weight slider, we want GV1 to adjust. In SF2, we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to adjust GV2 instead. And we're going to use the source expo and we'll turn that on. So this says the same thing. Anytime I move that input for Expo, we want to adjust GV2. You can see what's happened there, right? We just made adjustments. We just set it up so the radio will adjust the global variable. That global, Those global variables are applied in weight and Expo here and here. So that's how those numbers get transposed into the weight and Expo for these two inputs. Now it's time to get the audio work done. So for SF4, we're going to look at logical switch 01. And remember, logical switch 01 is when we have a change in global variable 1, which is our weight. On logical switch 1, we're going to play a track. And that track is rate. This is all available in the Amber sound pack. And we don't want to hear it during startup. We also, for logical switch 01, want to hear the value of the global variable. OK, let's look how this plays out. When logical switch number 1 lights, that happens when the global variable 1 increments or decrements by a value of 3 and the switch SB has to be in the middle position. When that happens, we're going to play a track called rate. Rate. And then we're going to play the value of GV1. For SF6, we're going to duplicate that function, but instead of playing the value for weight, we're going to play the value for expo. So play track. And I'm going to hit E to bring me down to the E's. And we're looking for expo. There we go. And 
logical switch zero two. We want to play the value of GV2. And we want all of these to only occur once, not during startup. Expo. OK, so we've got rate and expo and the values for those two being played when there's a change. OK, that occurs when there's a change. OK, we're heading for the home stretch. Let's look at special function number nine. The idea here is that once you've got your radio tuned the way you want it, I want to put a switch in that says, well, let me just hear what I've got. Because remember, this only plays when there's a change. Once you've got it where you want it, there's no changes. That means you're not going to hear this value being played. But just in case you want to hear, okay, where am I on Wait and Expo? I'm going to put a configuration that allows us to do that. So we'll, we'll use the SD middle switch, and we're going to play a track. Oops. We're going to play a track. Rate. And we're going to repeat it every 10 seconds. You can repeat it more or less if you want. We'll just use, in fact, for the demo, let's do it every five seconds. That way we use less time in the video. All right, SD middle. We're going to play our value. GV1, we'll repeat that every five seconds. For Expo, Let's use SD down, and we will play the track Expo. And we have to play the value of GV2. Okay, the last special function we need to establish is our instant trim, and we are going to use our momentary switch. Remember, on my radio, I switched my momentary over to SF. A stock radio master has it on SH, so make sure you use a momentary switch for this. Don't use a normal toggle switch. It doesn't work well. SF down, that means when I pull my momentary switch to me, this activates, and I want instant trim, and I'm going to put a check mark next to on. Okay, so that completes all of our setup steps. Let's review really quickly what we've got. We've got a safety curve, which establishes the lower and upper boundaries for weight and expo. We created two inputs that use that curve so that our inputs are governed by those upper and lower bounds. We've established rates that are switchable with the SB middle position for the aileron and elevator. By the way, you could just do aileron, you could just do elevator. You could put in two more inputs for potentiometers and put the elevator on one and the aileron on the other. Lots of different ways to do this. I'm just showing you a simple one. These two weights rely on global variables one and two, variable one for weight, variable two for expo. We've created logical switches that enable us to identify when movement occurs on the right slider and left slider. And then we've set up special functions that give us adjustments to global variable one and two so that we can actually change the weight and the expo while we're flying. And then we've got some audio prompts that'll explain to us what's happening on the radio. Now, one last thing to point out, SB middle is the key thing here. SB middle enables the adjustment and then SD, middle and down, play the values. So let's go into the simulator and try it out. All right, I wanna to go to the inputs page on the radio so you can see things get highlighted and what the radio is going to actually be doing. So when I have SB in the up position, you see how, you see how this top row is bold and this top row is bold? That means the radio is going to use 95 and 70. Those are high rates for this plane. When I put the SB switch in the down position, you can see that 35 and 30 are used for the aileron and 40 and 30 are used for the elevator. Now when I put it in the middle position, this is the one I want to show you. So we're going to click on edit and now I'm going to show you as I move these sliders rate around. 62, rate. 
let's turn the volume down for just a minute. We'll get back to her in just a minute. But when I move the left slider, you can see that my weight is changing. See how, so I'm going down to 85. And do you remember what our high number was? We set it at 95, right? So there's 95 on the high end. That's as high as we can go. And then as I move the slider down, do you remember the rate on the low sign? It was like 30, right? There we go, 30 and 30. So that's our weight and now our expo. So I'm gonna bring the weight back up just so we can see the expo actually working. So expo right now is kind of low and that's flat. So the expo right now is at 30 and now we'll move the expo all the way up to 90. And you can see those global variables on the side right here in this window. Global variable two is our expo variable. And as I move that slider up and down, you can see that global variable changing. Okay, so on the low end it's 30, on the high end it's 95. Okay, so that shows you that our weights and our expo are changing when we're in the SB middle position. If we leave that position, we go back to the hard-coded values that we configured in our dual rate setup from the onset. So let's take a look at our logical switches. Remember SB has to be in the middle position for any of this to work. The idea is that L1 should illuminate when we've moved our slider more than three positions. Rate 66, rate 71, rate 75. The same thing should happen for Expo. I'm just gonna move that one down and we'll listen to the radio tell us what the Expo is. Expo 90, Expo 86, Expo 82, Expo 78, Expo 74, Expo 70. Okay, let's say we like this configuration just where we are right now. And we're out flying around and we wanna hear what is our weight. So let's go ahead and click the SD middle and we'll let the radio talk to us a little bit. Rate 75. Rate 75. Okay, you see over here, the global variable one, rate is 75. Rate 75. Rate 75. So I set it for five seconds in this demo just so you guys could could hear it without waiting for a long time. Let's go ahead and move it down to SD down position, which will play Expo. Rate 75. Expo 70. Expo 70. Expo 70. Rate 75. All right, there you go. So now we have a way while we're flying to have the radio tell us what the rate is repeatedly. Rate 75. And what the expo, expo is. Expo 70. And then if we don't want to hear anything, we can turn it rate off. Rate 75. And we can have it read out our weight and expo based on the position of the slider when we make a move. Rate 71. Expo 66. And remember, you can always get out of this variable configuration just by putting your SB switch in either the up position or the down position. And then you go back to hard-coded rates. This is a very powerful configuration that will allow you, rather than take off land, take off land, I don't even know how many of my videos you've probably watched where you've heard me say, man, i got to change the expo, and I land the plane and I make a change. Why? <laughs> You know, with the with this configuration, what's sad is I'm like the shoemaker's son. I know how to do all this stuff, I just don't do it. I'm gonna put this in my basic model template so that when I take an airplane up for a maiden, I've got this configuration built in, why not? And you can use this after maiden too. You may decide while you're flying, hey, I wanna put it in the tuning rate, the middle, and make adjustments as you fly for any given set of circumstances during the day. If you're a returning visitor and you're not a subscriber yet, please consider subscribing. We've been driving the number down. We're down to 68% now, which is great, but that still means a full two thirds of the people who watch my videos don't subscribe. So if you're using this content, I definitely would appreciate it if you hit that subscription button and join the channel because it helps my videos get placement on YouTube and that's my payback as I'm trying to grow my channel. So I, I definitely would appreciate your subscription and for all you regulars out there, you all know what to do. Just keep the comments coming, thumbs up, share, don't forget to hit my t-shirt store and my Amazon affiliate links if you need some consumable RC equipment. That's all I've got for today, guys. Take it easy. 30 and 90 are going to be the weights and expos. No. For the middle switch position, SB middle, I'm going to set it up so that the aileron and the elevator both use our variable 
switch values. Oh, how do you describe this? For aileron and elevator, I'm going to establish no, one. I'm going to set to be on. And now we were talking early. I don't know what just happened there. Special. Spe, I'm going to use. OK, beep, beep, beep. We have a lot of work to do in this one. This is step four. No, let's try it again. Beep, beep, beep. We've got a lot of work to do in special functions. I'm just going to jump right in and keep babbling and flapping your gums. And then we're going to mimic that for our expo. Actually, no. Now for...